Today's show is sponsored by Procure, maker of hydrocortisone cream with calendula. This max strength hydrocortisone cream is enhanced with organic calendula to provide fast itch relief that won't irritate further. It doesn't contain parabens, alcohols, or fragrances. Try hydrocortisone cream with calendula today and get a $3 discount on Amazon using the code 3ANGELA. Just go to ProcureHeals.com slash Angela and use the code 3ANGELA. That's the number 3 plus Angela, all one word, and make sure you type it in all caps. This week's episode is brought to you by Buffy Comforters. Buffy has created the best comforter you'll ever sleep with. And after 11,000 reviews, customers agree it's the softest, fluffiest comforter they've ever tried. Buffy products are made using only renewable and recycled materials, which makes them as soft on the planet as they are on your bed. The Buffy Cloud Comforter feels even softer than down, while keeping approximately 50 bottles out of landfills and oceans. For $20 off your Buffy Comforter, visit Buffy.co and enter promo code LIPSERVICE. That's B-U-F-F-Y dot C-O, promo code LIPSERVICE for $20 off your Buffy Comforter. Injured in a car crash, slip and fall, or on the job? You need a law firm that's big enough to challenge the largest insurance companies and corporations. Morgan & Morgan has nearly 500 attorneys throughout the country and they've recovered billions of dollars for clients like you. Get America's largest personal injury law firm to fight for you with no upfront costs. And it's free unless they win. Visit ForThePeople.com Lip service. All right, what's up, what's up? It's Lip Service. I'm Angela Yee. I'm Gigi McGuire. I'm Stephanie Santiago. I'm L'Oreal. And we are wet with excitement. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Because we have Lisa Ann here with us. Hello. Hello, ladies. Hi. Hi. This is definitely the most beautiful table of women I've ever sat with for an interview. Oh, Oh, That means a lot because you know some amazingly beautiful women. I do. But look at this table. It's powerful. (laughs) Thank you for having me. And your spirits are so good. She actually came here by herself early Mm -hmm. to get ready for the interview, which I can appreciate because you've been in entertainment forever. And sometimes people get like really just... You know, Viva ish. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it affects me as a producer because talent will show up so late that then I have to pay overtime on the location. Mm. So it costs me money, you know. And when they get there, you can't really be upset because you don't want to make that moment even worse. So mm-hmm. you just kind of have to take Deal it. And it. So right. I always make sure I'm early. I'll sit down the street and have a coffee or a snack and just kind of tweet a little bit and get my feelings. It's just better than rushing. Y'all know I'm the same way, right? Yeah, Angela will go to the airport oh, three so the, hours I just told her that. She just brought Oh up. my God, it's mm-hmm. so annoying. And then if if you're flying with her, don't fly with her. Because she'll be like, where are you? So you're just, you didn't leave yet? Ah, da, da, da. And she's the worst with I'm that I'm the stuff. same. And by the way, <laughs> I have friends that I meet them at the airport because they stress me out yeah. wanting to be late. And I just want to get through security and not be sweating it. I want to go just, sit in the Sky Club. Yep, yeah, me too. Yeah, see, that's, just, that, that's what I was about to say. You go early because you can sit in the Sky Club. You we can't do it there. there. When you're there, right. <laughs> but when you're not there, I'm not going to the airport to sit in the terminal. Well... well LaGuardia and um, and JFK they have the cool terminal with the mm-hmm. little uh, iPads now so. but also there's nothing yeah, worse than being true. late and I think part of that like you said as a producer you understand the value of time is money time is money right yep. and for me because I do you know morning radio I know also when people are late how it affects the whole day mm-hmm. yeah. so that's why I'm always like cognizant of that and you never know what could go wrong so. but when people are late to, to diffuse it I usually just say better late than pregnant right Right. <laughs> and then we move on. <laughs> Moving on. You know? Now let's I talk like about, that. Let's talk about your business savvy. Because first of all, and let's be very clear, Lisa Ann is the one person that I will say that I said that Lisa Ann's coming on. And everybody, everybody said something. And I think all of us told like our respective people yeah. and everyone was like, oh my God, oh my I'm so God. excited. So Can I come? Can so I just hang out? Can I watch? Right. The what? guys show us like their favorite video of yours. I'm, I'm like, really? This do I, You just this? have this downloaded yeah. on your phone? Right. Like, Let me show you my favorite one. Like, you okay. know, if you look into the psychology of it, these men are smart. <laughs> and they've watched me for years be very consistent. I'm kind of a rite of passage to young men all mm-hmm. over the world world. I did a tour of Italy last year and I was even more loved there by the men than here. Um, So what they see is something that has no guilt attached to it. Mm -hmm. So they can enjoy watching me. I am a, you know, willing participant and they know it and they know I love it. And so I think there's that because sometimes you watch a girl, you really like her and then it gets dark. You realize like she's not looking right, you know, (laughs) and the guys will pull away from that because then there's some guilt associated with their porn. So with me, it's just like, yo, this chick's okay. She's cool with me watching. She likes doing it. Mm -hmm. This is a way 
win for everybody. I'm gonna support this. Yeah, yes. <laughs> no, it's great. You yes. are like the number one most searched porn star. Mm-hmm. And wow. Yeah, in America. Wow, that's in that's the world. Insane. How did that feel for you? It's it's interesting because when I got in the business, there was no internet, mm-hmm. and I never really mm-hmm. had a goal other than to prep for prep myself like three basic things. Mm-hmm. I wanted to make my own money, travel and see the world, and make my own schedule. That's really all yes, I wanted from life. I didn't care if I got married, if I had kids. That's it. Just that financial freedom is such a big deal, and so the business provided me that. And then the side bonus is meeting people. I mean, it doesn't mm-hmm. always go well. There's some guys that are uber creepy when they I'm meet sure. me. Like, sure. you know, I'm sure. I'm safe yeah, in this I room right imagine. now, as excited as everybody may be, but like, there's some creepy shit that goes down. No, these guys are creepy. I don't know. Yeah, no, yeah, don't try around. <laughs> We're just buffering. <laughs> so you're saying if they saw me on the street, it would be different? They might be like, hey, I saw your little girl. They're all shaking their head. Yes, dude. You make some noise. Especially the ones that call you out yet. It's so red. Every day, at least 10 men walk up to me out of nowhere and just look at me and say oh my god Lisa I love you oh, <laughs> that has to be amazing like that has to be an amazing feeling to receive so much love and respect and it's also sweet because they're willing to express an emotion right. that maybe they're not even telling their girlfriend yet mm-hmm. like they're still in denial <laughs> right, with her. Right, but right, they just right. come out throw their, my, my friends watch it and they're like it's just so neat you bring out such a soft side in people and then you made the transition like you said to producing and so what made you realize okay I'm not only going to star in these movies but I have to produce them what was that transition like It was very important at a time when I really thought the scenes that I was being asked to do were going to a level that I wasn't comfortable. I'm fine being the MILF, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's cute. I get to be with the hot pool guy, like I'm down, (laughs) this is good, you know? But when they wanted me to be a stepmom, and then when it really turned into this, I was like, you know what, I'm not going to work for other people. I'm just going to produce my own content. I'm going to stylize it the way I want. I'm going to put it out the way I want. And though other people will still offer me more money to work for them. Mm -hmm. And I now work for browsers like two days a month, but Mm -hmm. they let me have complete creative control of the script so nice. uh, what I'm comfortable with and that I've also started the conversation like you know you guys are pushing girls to do things that you don't know if it's something bad happened in their real life mm-hmm. and you know, we don't do a survey when we get in the business we're not asking right. people what they've been up against so I just felt it was time and now that I'm doing this other girls are coming forward and saying you know what I'm just I'm also not comfortable playing that role mm-hmm. and so it's making a nice little list for produ- production companies to be real with Nice. Well, what kind of roles now? You did mention the stepmother role. What is what kind of things make you uncomfortable? There's a lot of incestual stuff. Mm. Mm. There's a lot of derogatory stuff. Right. Um, there's a really lot of aggressive weird. stuff. I'm not into being choked, and I'm not judging anybody that is, but it's right. just not my thing. Right. I'm not into being spit on, smacked, like mm-hmm. you know. And so this is so common now mm-hmm. that I became a little bit anxious about going on set and afraid like what am I up against I have to talk to the director I have to talk to the guy are they working behind my back like what's going on here and that didn't feel good so those are the type of scenes I wanted to pull away from Mm -hmm. has somebody ever done something like unexpected that wasn't in the script that you were like now hold up my very first scene I ever did during the scene the guy smacked me across my face oh no no. you smack him back I I just stopped and looked right at the camera we were shooting on film back then so you were never supposed to make them cut Mm. when they weren't ready to cut so right, it was like right. this big hole and I looked at him and I'm like yo what did I do you know and he's like oh that's just what I do I'm like okay not let's me. talk not about this me. now yeah. not talk- script, and I was sir. young you know yeah. it was my first scene and so I, I knew young from interviewing girls that worked at my club in Pennsylvania that were porn stars they would come in and dance every week and I would ask them all these questions about what I need to know I knew I could have a no list mm-hmm. so as soon as that scene was over I said to him yo I'm cool with you I'm sure we're going to see each other a lot but we're never working together again you know, <laughs> first guy I ever worked with first right. guy on my no list grand and we stuck grand to closing. it we, we remained friends and mm-hmm. he hired me for his production company years later so it funny. was always really cool but he was like hey I respect the fact that you know what you do and you don't want mm-hmm. and you're not going to take a risk Again. You should have slapped yeah. the shit out of him. I would have slapped him back. Good thing you wasn't drinking a tequila. <laughs> you should have bit his Because he would have got it. I was so <laughs> kind of timid then. You know what right. I mean? So yeah. I wouldn't have even thought. I just had to stop and be like, huh. What? what was that about? Yeah. Yeah. You should have right. tangled up his balls. <laughs> Tied him in a knot. <laughs> Made it a bow. I love getting slapped and choked she does and love spit it. on. I, I have friends to do. We're going to hook you I up. I get it. I, I get it. I get it. I know there's tons of people that do. You know what I mean? Like, I'll be having bruises and 
face marks on my face. Well, you might need a therapist. <laughs> no, man. It can I be might. a phase, too. You can go through sexual phases. Because when I had a really shitty job, I went through a sexual phase where I liked to be choked and smacked. Mm. And then I decided to seek a therapist because I was like, okay, I'm tripping on something. No. And she said, you are just trying to push a level to feel something outside of how much emotion you're feeling that's penting you up from work. I feel like when I was young, I um I used to like it a lot more. I used to like getting my hair pulled and like really getting beat up during sex. I really liked it. And then I got to like this middle area in my late twenties that I was like, and no, we I can't. I'm too old for this. I'm 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 tired. I, I can't. Let's just have regular sex. Like I don't want this anymore. And now I'm like Choke me. Choke me, slap me, give me your <laughs> Come on. But does anyone tell you no? Yeah, I've had to train guys to do it because they be scared. Mm. Like my ex, the, the one I was with before the guy I'm with now. Him, I used to, I had to train him a little bit. And he got with the program, though. He would give me, like, little taps while I was sucking his dick. He will give me, like, little taps. So his poor new girlfriend is probably like, what the fuck? <laughs> I know. I she called the police. Yeah. 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 She's like, help. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to do a this or that with you. Okay. And you ladies can answer, too, and see what you like better. Okay. okay. As far as work, solo masturbation or lesbian porn? To, to do watch. for you to do oh, for me to do I love solar masturbation because it's so much fun I love <laughs> masturbating on the internet I love doing webcam and I like text my friends I'm like yo I'm masturbating on the internet tonight I'm so happy <laughs> um, I don't know why I just find it super fun it reminds me of the 90s when we shot a lot of solo girl stuff and you had to be really intimate with the camera and you had to fantasize about things to look sexy and that's where I really found my fantasies so what do you fantasize about all kinds of things I mean I remember when I very first started I was obsessed with Ben Affleck and it was always <laughs> Ben Affleck you know what I mean I mean, so it could be a celebrity, could be just a hot guy, could be like the cable guy shows up and he actually is really good looking. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a mm-hmm. foreign man that speaks no English that will just do whatever I want. And you not know. talk. Amazing. Yeah, and just take my trash out, <laughs> do my shit. But all first right. you asked to watch. So which one would it be to watch? Solo. Solo? Yeah. Okay. What do you guys mm-hmm. think that mm, I'm gonna say Gigi's gonna say She's the only one here that's like halfway a lesbian. What, girl on girl? Clearly. Yeah. I mean, okay. even though I love to masturbate. So it's a tough one for you. I love to masturbate, but if I had to choose this or that, my whole theory about sexual things with other women is why when I play with this, when I can play with that, and she'll play with that. <laughs> <laughs> so. What about watching? Would y'all rather watch solo masturbation or lesbian porn? Lesbian. To me, it's like the same thing because it's like I'm watching pussy either way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's interesting to watch how girls do it. Everybody does it different. It's just like when you're mm. asked to give a good hand job on a new guy, you don't know what he's like. Does he like it spun? Does he like it tight? Does he like it fast? Does he like it slow? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I just like to master how the girl does it. And mm-hmm. then, you know, like what's her jam? Is she? So that's kind of what I get into. Because okay. if she's going to come, she has to do her little thing. Yeah. All right. I never thought about that. Anal or gangbang? Oh my God! I get the <laughs> anal in the gangbang. So and because gangbangs <laughs> are best of both worlds, baby. yeah, and, and they're so hard to arrange. I definitely have to say gangbangs because there's never going to be a point in my life where I've had enough of them. Wow! Okay. Yeah. I love group interaction, especially when guys are cool with each other, and I could just be just the one. You Some know? of those dicks you had are humongous, though. Yeah, we were very intimidated. Thank How you. did you, you do that? You're so <laughs> tiny. I, just, I can't believe I couldn't where believe it. You know what? Where, where does it go? I'm just lucky. Uh, <laughs> she, my business partner is is really flexible and she uh, t- handles all my of it. My business and loves partner. It. Right. You know, <laughs> you know right. it's going to turn out. Some mm-hmm. girls get sore. I was one of those girls that didn't. You know what yeah. I mean? But like, not there's back is no crazy. way that's about to fit in there. And if it's DP. Yeah. Oh, it fits. Both of them. <laughs> Both of them fit. Wow. The women's body is amazing. Yes, it sure is. All right, for you guys, anal or gangbang, what do you like? To watch? Mm-hmm. Oh, um, <laughs> gangbang probably for sure. Because mm-hmm. you get it all. You yeah, get low and job. You, and if right. someone isn't looking great, you can look away and see what he's doing. Like, it's, there's so and much And I'm a fan at. of like multiple dicks in one hole. Like, Double penetration? Yeah, yeah like three yet. dicks in a hole. Like Ugh. two. I like watching I that. it. That's yeah, my favorite. I, like see, I don't watch that either. <laughs> see, I don't watch I don't it. I like that. the DP, the bad really? ass, and no all in one. For some reason, I overthink it. So I don't watch that. Yeah. One hole, please. One dick, one hole. At a time. 
<laughs> one dick, one. <laughs> what do you, one. What do you I think, say? I think that I would rather watch um, Gang Bang mm-hmm. than anal. Me too. That's all. I, that's the only porn I watch. Yeah, oh, that's like my favorite. Good, that's no. my favorite. <laughs> do you find there's not enough of it out there? No, I really do find <laughs> there's not I'll enough. I'll tell you why, because it's the hardest thing to shoot, to book, to organize. It is. I can't a, imagine. A movie can take me a month to put everything together, all my production, all my talent. A Gang Bang can take me five months. Wow. wow. Oh, yeah, because you have a lot of things you got to think about. You got to think about location. You definitely don't want a location with carpet. You definitely have to get a location that is willing to do it. And a lot of that narrows down to like a 10 percentile. Mm-hmm. Oh. Then you have to work out the logistics of everyone's cars because normally there isn't enough parking for everybody. Oh, then you got to be able to show everybody's cool with everybody. Right. Then now we have Uber and Lyft. They can't just That's do- what I do now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but before we had to do something, we would park and meet everybody at a grocery store and drive everywhere at the house. Oh, wow. Um, and it's also like you're trying to get 10 people at the same place at the same time. Right. That's not going to happen. With schedules. So you're going to look at about two hours of a window where like one person might cancel or one person might get a flat tire on the way there or whatever. It is a lot to logistically plan. So wow. that's what makes well, them harder to put together. It's very appreciated. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. 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 All of the hard work that you guys put into making it happen. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Because the guys have to walk. get along Thank with you. each other. <laughs> right. They no? definitely do. There's they a lot do. of trust involved. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Mm, yes. I'm sure it is. <laughs> have you ever been filming when a gangbang and guys start like sucking each other's dick and you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> no, we keep that really separate because that wouldn't be something that we would distribute. So it's not that I'm against it, but, and if they wanted to do it, it'd be fine. But when we, you're there, it's just business. They know we're shooting this for this type of site right. and they know what the limitations are on that right. type of site. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. There hasn't ever been a dick that's too big where you were like, okay, no. You know what? Yes. Wow. Oh my gosh. Why am I thinking his really? real name? Mandingo. I mean, I did it, mm-hmm. but when I did anal with Mandingo, I was really, it was, I remember I had to fly here on a red eye after the scene. I was like, I cannot believe I have to sit down oh. for a whole flight right now. You know what I mean? But he's big. You've seen Wait. Mandingo. You guys Can we have rewind seen this a little bit? She said anal with the biggest dick yeah, ever. Yeah, that's not even just that regular sex with the biggest dick ever. Anal with the biggest dick ever? Yeah. Girl. Mm-hmm. I can't do it. You anal. just have to really ease in with the butt plugs. And when you have a bigger guy, you have to get a bigger butt plug. And you take about an hour before the scene to, to just really to just open it up oh, and be okay. chill. You I know? tell y'all about the I just can't do anal. I can't get comfortable enough. Cause I'd be like no, it's just gonna close my butt. Just be like, no, it doesn't work. See, she, you're I'm doing like, no. it for a job, so that's one thing. But for, if it was for somebody I love, I'm not sitting with a butt plug in my butt for an hour. You don't have to do that if you're not shooting, because you're not gonna do it for 25 minutes uh, like we are. You're okay. only gonna do it for five, for six five minutes, minutes, right? It's putting the butt plug in move. the thing that you should do. Like even if you just at home, no, you no? you don't have to go that far. The thing what people don't realize is your jaw is connected to your anus. So if you clench your teeth, your your butt is definitely going to be tight as well. Really? And after, like this. and after you're in the first... <laughs> look at me sitting here. Like, yeah. She looks like oh. a chunky doll. So you just have, relax your jaw. Just always, rela- always focus on relaxing your jaw and your breathing. And know that once you're past that first half of an inch, you won't even feel it at all. Yeah, because that happens. Yeah, you know, that's, that's the problem. problem. That's, that's, the head, that's always the problem. That's the problem. And use head, silicone. It's a mushroom just head. Always Lord. use silicone lube instead of water lube for anal as well. And that makes a huge difference. Really? Yeah. Oh, really? You know, I when like I started low, low. The, the KY liquid right. with the blue yeah, top, I, I like it. No blue <laughs> top? You need the silicone for anal. Oh, what about oh, for spit? anal? The spit work? Silicone no, no. no, it's not good because it'll actually make the skin more porous and it'll make it grab more onto the dick. So you'll, you'll be pulling your own skin more. You really want to give it that glide and that protection. That's what silicone does. Nice. There's a science to this guy. When I nice. started, so I, I didn't, didn't know the jaw <laughs> thing. She put us on. Start, <laughs> I didn't start trying anal until I was in my 30s in my personal life. And my rule of thumb was I would never shoot anything I I hadn't done in my personal life so I had to do it my personal life first and so be able to make I money found that lucky one, guy you were like look I gotta try this with this you I actually <laughs> asked performers to help me I had it with a guy that I was hanging out with and then I had performers help me but what I thought was easiest was condoms in the beginning I just felt because I wasn't doing it on camera so I was doing it with condom and I was like wow it's a lot easier with condom because mm-hmm. it gives again a protective so, yeah, yeah yeah and also mm-hmm. when you put silicone lube on a condom it gives it it stays it doesn't soak into the skin so mm-hmm. that's the way right to in. try it for people too when you first start doing it is use Good a condom. Tips. Angela, write down <laughs> all the notes. Serious. You can replay. You can listen on demand, I'm sure. I'm sure we'll find it. We want Angela to get fucked up her ass. Clearly. How old are you, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, too old. Grown. Too old to not, <laughs> have, had, grown, not grown. to have tried it. Over 30s. I, yes. So I was I was oh, just over 30s too. I was 35. Okay, so there's hope. Yes, yeah, so there's hope yeah. still. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe, you know, you know, it'll get there. If you, you know, one day. If I tell my boyfriend I want to try anal, he'd be like, why do you all of a sudden want to try anal? Because, because you, you got, got a good lesson. Lesson. Oh. 
We yeah. just went to like Andrew sure University. Just just come up here, with it. Okay. This is research, you know. Yeah. And, then you, and then I come back and interview her afterwards. We talk Please. about it. How you, do you know how go? we always give people homework? Give her a due date. Oh, yeah. We have a professor here. Give She's her, give her a deadline. deadline. Yeah, give her a deadline. Speaking of professor, I watched the Dr. Ruth documentary last night. Oh, I saw time. you oh tweeting about that. And I'm meeting her next week in That's London. That's so exciting. I'm so <laughs> jealous. And now that I watch the documentary, I'm like, oh my God, I'm a new hero. Like, I might buckle. You know I what haven't I mean? seen the documentary. I gotta go watch it. She, she was what, a what, What's the documentary on next time? Her life. But I mean, what chance was um, uh, oh, that Hulu. network? Hulu. Oh, it's on Hulu. Hulu. I don't have Hulu. I, I got it. I'll yeah. give you my Sign up for the free trial. Right, yeah, somebody give me the damn password. Yeah, get the free trial. I'm a Netflix I did that. I, I have Netflix I too. downloaded Hulu, did the free trial to watch something. I can't remember what And now they charge And then you. I canceled it. Oh, see. I have, I have two different people's <laughs> Netflix accounts, so I can have it on different... <laughs> I love this. Me too. What's, what's wrong with me? I only downloaded Hulu to watch Flavor of Love. <laughs> what? I'm sorry, Yo, I have to admit that. We were it and dying. <laughs> we was watching like episode after episode after episode right. of Flavor of Love. That shit was hilarious. But how about I'm so offering funny. one up, and it's not even mine. It's my sister's. So I'm like, well, I got one if you want to use it. <laughs> what's wrong with y'all? I don't know. <laughs> All right, now, one more this or that. Interracial or 69? Interracial. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's your thing, girl. Because that's yeah. what all the guys was like, yes. Wait, you got to look at like she's stuck in a plastic. 69. <laughs> watching 69 can be so awkward. It's mm-hmm. a hard thing to shoot to really get good camera angles. If the people's bodies are really different in size, mm-hmm. it's a little bit. I mean, in real life, it's pretty hard to do. I don't even know. like 69s in 69 real life. 69 sucks. It's awkward. It's only if you're drunk moment. and you just end up in it's that It's also position. like distracting because I like to either concentrate right. on one or the other. I well, like. Me too. I always trick uh, them and stop. Like sucking and the then dick you and just, just like, like oh wait. <laughs> I have this thing where I like to sit on guys' face. So if I'm right. on top in the sixty nine, then I'm gonna it's you know, good. You good. stop. You know, little reverse cowgirl, little head on the face, little spin. You know, <laughs> what if a guy nice. sat on your face? No, never. Okay. <laughs> You're not sitting on my face, sir. <laughs> Sorry. Do not. No. Do not. Me and my friends were having this conversation about <laughs> sucking dick from the back. Have you guys done that? Uh, yes. yes. We had a conversation. Oh, yeah, we talked about Gigi it. loves that. While you were away, we had a nice yeah, couple of conversations about, about really? sucking dick from the back. I've never mm-hmm. done that. It's amazing. It's good mm-hmm. for them. I Listen, don't know. L'Oreal made me try yeah, yeah, I made Gigi do it. Mm-hmm. But now, I just feel like my man would be too uncomfortable because I'd be too close to his ass. Or he might be he got really comfortable. <laughs> he got to spread him. There's no other way to get in between. With, you also have to deal with, with a guy who's long enough to reach back there. That's right, because if he ain't got not, a big enough dick, yeah, you ain't going to be able to If he has a short dick, you'll be licking his taint. And <laughs> oh, my man's dick, dick is pretty big. <laughs> you'll be eating his dick instead of like eating his pussy. <laughs> Do you like to suck dick from the back? Yeah, and the size is everything. That's yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, we know yours, you be getting the big enough ones. Well, I have real life size penis in my life as well. Well, luckily, the guy that I hang out with the most and um, have sex with him, my personal mm-hmm. sex also is very well equipped, actually. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What about could There's you be with a guy? There's been times I've not liked him and said I cannot Ooh. talk to him anymore because I need that. <laughs> Dickmatize. That's the same with my boyfriend. Like, there's times that we've like we've been on and off for so long. And there's times like I'm like, oh, the only reason I'm giving this nigga some pussy is because he got that dick. <laughs> <laughs> I've cut the only off. reason. I've cut somebody off for being too big. Like, really? I'm like, I can't take it. Like, I can't do it anymore. I just can't. And there should be somewhere you could pass those off on the internet. <laughs> yeah, sure. Like a list of those, like rejections for the reason of right. too big. I think it would really be helpful to others and, and you'd be the sure the audience, sharing telling information. You, I would definitely <laughs> pass them off. Like, he was really, really good, but it's just not for me. Like, I it need could my be wall. a frame color on Tinder. <laughs> rejected for do being too big. And then women yeah. could yeah. help him out. You help him out. I would, you, right? You Pass would. him around. Yeah. What about too little? Has that ever been an issue? It has. I, I remember working one day on set with a guy that it was just for my website. And I remember walking off set and going into the bathroom to text my friends like, holy fucking shit, I can't believe this is happening right now. Uh, it was just small and I couldn't understand how he slipped through and got into porn. Right. You just assume. Right. Right. Wow. process. You know, um, but, but in real life, I'm a pretty good gauge of not getting myself into that awkward situation. Do you think there's a real way you could tell how big a guy's dick is without seeing it first? Because, you know, they always talk about, like, the size of his hands, the size of his feet, and yeah. different things Tall like that. Is there a way that out? you can, like, have a dick dar or dick radar? I dick do dar. think the way he carries himself, mm-hmm. and I do think big, you big can energy. get 
big dick energy. <laughs> BDE, baby. <laughs> and also medium dick energy, but you can also send small dick energy. Medium. Small dick medium. energy Definitely. is like, I think right. small dick energy, you can sense that small dick energy. Right. He's like yes. angry. Right. Yes. Yes. He's bitter. <laughs> you got to add it you know? to everybody. Or he's like, yeah, you know. Acts like he's the shit. Nice. Yeah. Whenever right. a guy no, no. emailed me like, hey, I have a small dick. What am I going to do? I'm like, study in school, become a plastic surgeon. You'll still fuck hot chicks. That's oh, right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Give them free work. That's You'll smart. just have to give a discount on free work. Advice. Yeah. That's really good Don't advice. Don't struggle with it. Just work the brain. That's what you were given. Yeah. <laughs> Use your talents, baby. Oh, my God. <laughs> still end up at the same place. Right. Fucking the hot girls. MAC Powder Kiss Lipstick is the moisture matte lipstick of your dreams. It's matte reinvented. MAC's new matte formula feels weightless, instantly hydrates, and doesn't dry out your lips. It was originally developed as a backstage trend for a soft matte look, so it's backstage tested and artist approved. Many other matte lipsticks are drying, but the Powder Kiss lipstick is where matte meets moisture. The velvety soft matte colors glide on effortlessly, providing instant long-term hydration that doesn't dry out your lips. So you get the zero shine smooth look of a matte lipstick with the lightweight feel of a bomb. The Powder Kiss lipstick comes in 24 gorgeous colors with a wide range of pinks, nudes, reds, and plums to complement any skin tone. The weightless, cushiony texture of the Powder Kiss lipstick is the perfect way to amplify your look this spring. MAC Powder Kiss lipsticks comes in the best colors, and right now my favorite is Style Shocked. So get into a totally new lip experience with the Powder Kiss lipstick. Head to your nearest MAC location to meet your MAC today or shop at maccosmetics.com. Are you craving flavor and refreshment this summer? Pick up one of the three flavors of Bud Light Chilada, Original, Extra Lime, and the newest member of the family, Mango. Bud Light Chilada is the perfect drink for drinking at brunch on the beach or just hanging out with friends in the sun. The Original Chilada brings you the crisp, refreshing taste of Bud Light with the rich signature taste of a Clamato tomato cocktail. This distinctive blend delivers a flavor that truly refreshes. The Chilada Extra Lime delivers a citrusy spin on the classic Chilada flavor, and the Chilada Mango brings a tropical touch to a summertime favorite. To best enjoy your Chilada, gently rotate the chill can once before pouring. Then pour over ice and garnish with a slice of lime, some celery or mango, salt the rim of your glass, or add a dash of hot sauce for even more kick. Pick up a Bud Light Chilada today and learn more at BudLight.com. Perfect for all those day parties that we love. Bud Light Chilada, flavor that refreshes. Thanks again to Buffy Comforters for supporting this week's episode. Buffy makes bedding that is super comfy and super sustainable. Buffy products are made using only renewable and recycled materials, which makes them as soft on the planet as they are on your bed. Buffy Comforters keep you at the perfect temperature so you feel cozy without overheating. Plus, the Buffy Cloud Comforter is hypoallergenic. It's High thread count shuts out dust, mold, and mites for a healthier sleeping environment. The inside fill of each Buffy comforter is made from 100% recycled water bottles that are transformed and given a second life as a super fluffy fiber. The Buffy Cloud Comforter feels even softer than down while keeping approximately 50 bottles out of landfills and oceans. I can't sleep without a blanket over my face, and the Buffy Comforter is comfortable, it's breathable, and it always gives me a good night's sleep. Buffy believes bedding is personal, so they offer a complimentary trial. Try a comforter in your own bed for 30 days. If you don't love it, return it for free. For $20 off your Buffy comforter, visit Buffy.co and enter promo code lip service. That's B-U-F-F-Y dot C-O, promo code lip service for $20 off your Buffy comforter. Now, we know you love basketball yes. and you're actually excited to go watch the game tonight. So what's your team? I'm pretty neutral because I play fantasy basketball. Mm-hmm. So these are season long and daily leagues where I pick players for matchups. I really love basketball is my first love. And so it's about matchups and players that have moved teams and I get to see them. And I, I just love it all. So during season, I can pretty much watch basketball seven days a week. Mm-hmm. So I don't need to pick a team. I just play games. But you've That's never cool. had a team? That's so cool. um, well, I grew up a 76ers fan. Okay. You did say you were from Michael PA, Rubin. right? Yeah. My, 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 okay, Easton. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So my very first basketball game was a 1983 76ers game. Nice. Uh, that was actually the last year that they won it all. So later wow. in life, I collected a team-sized 
jer- signed jersey with a matching ball and Dr. J. Once I came into money, the first thing I wanted to do was, I was like, I'm going to gonna, say, I'm gonna get this collection. <laughs> and uh, so I would have been a Sixers fan, but I live in L.A. and mm-hmm. I've I've lived here for a period of time as well. So like I'd be the Knicks, but they're tragic. The Lakers <laughs> yeah, are tragic. tragic. The Nets it's, are doing better. If they, you are, better the Nets they are. They are. Better. D'Angelo Russell had a, a breakout season this year, and this mm-hmm. was what we all thought he could be before he got into that swaggy P situation about two, three, which two was years hilarious. Ago. Which, hilarious. by the way, is good how he's recovered from that though. You just but he did just get caught with keep... weed at the airport. But that's yeah, not a big did. deal. Yeah, that's not bad. He We's not a big deal anymore. It, it makes boy. it a big. It's deal. not a big deal. It's just stupid. It makes you doubt your overall. Like, oh, was this all fluke? And you can't keep this consistent because you have friends that can pick that shit up for you. Better yet, you get friends that can put in their bag for you. Like, weed is everywhere. Why put it in a put in an iced tea can? Like he's gonna get away with that through TSA. You can't even bring iced tea through the daggone line. Ding 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 ding. So. Well, that, frustrates, our Brooklyn Nets. that frustrates me <laughs> when I see that repeated stupidity. Look, Angie got quiet. She's like Homer that disappeared but in the bushes. I love the arena. <laughs> yeah, I, love, I love where the Nets play. I love Barclays. Oh, the Barclays. Okay. Yeah. During the basketball Barclays games, nice. that energy in there, the music, they really, it's amazing. It's we have to bring you to a game then. We got to do a little courtside Brooklyn okay. Nets oh, situation. Wear some good shoes. Yes. <laughs> and we know that you've been with some NBA players. Yes. So you've yeah. never liked a team because you've liked somebody that you were fucking at the time no 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 I'll watch him and his stats but I'm not gonna go root for his team for just teams, cause we're hanging because, out yeah. and that would get complicated you no, know what and I mean? that's so corny when girls do that that's yeah no so I'm not corny. wearing your jersey yeah, and like, you know what I won't even hang a jersey in my house of anybody I've had sex with yeah I, these right. are all my Damn. fan experiences I don't wanna put your right. shit up on my wall yeah right <laughs> <laughs> no but nobody's ever really tried to like be with you, wipe you up from the NBA? I'm I- very clear when I meet people and tell them what I'm looking for. And I say, you know, you can't try and change me. I'm not going to try and change you. But I just like to see somebody and have a good time and live in that moment. Life is very complicated. We're all very busy. I don't mm-hmm. fuck with people that are in a relationship or married. Uh, those are my rules. So a lot of times I, I hang out with somebody, he gets into a little thing, then we're just friends during that time, then right. they break up, come back. But I make it very, very clear. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to be with somebody. I don't want to marry somebody half my age. Right. I mean, oh, it's hot and it's fun but I don't need that kind of stress you know what I mean are younger guys really uh, better I want to be able to age and not fucking be tripping and my dude looks so good and I don't are younger guys really better in bed you think than older guys they're just like I can tell what porn they watch the first time we're together I can tell exactly what sites they go to really? so that oh, wow. they are how just, can you tell give me an because example because Brazzers style fucking is totally different than let's say like a Bang Bros style fucking. I like, like Brazzers that's right. like my favorite oh, we're friends with Bang Bros shout out to Bang Bros <laughs> shout out to Bang Bros and the Bang Bus which is so you all know it is real stand on the corner Miami might get picked up. Um, no wow. way. I just like to tell people when fools wow. ask me, I'm like, yeah, it's real. You see a van that opens the door, get the fuck in it. See what happens. It'll be, you know it. be a good time. Do it. It'll be on the amateurs. I've seen it like 30 other porns. It's like, a right. shady yeah. warehouse di- di- district they drive around. But no, you know, it's just not my thing. And mm-hmm. I, I and also what's great about our rapport is once players realize I don't talk about who I'm with, mm-hmm. they can start to come to me with things. We build a nice friendship. They know I love sports. I kind of I'm up their ass if they do stupid shit like get caught with weed at the airport mm-hmm. I'm the first one to reach out literally like, up their Yo, ass. your mom's gonna be pissed you should be embarrassed like let's, let's do better mm-hmm. you know and, and I so I have like this kind of really friendly fun simple and easy relationship and it's just great and young guys are you know, it's just exciting because they can do it two, three, four times in a day because they're younger, you know, than a guy say my age. Mm. What are some crazy things that you've been asked to do by like an NBA player that maybe they feel more comfortable because you're a porn star? Yeah. So they might ask you to do shit that they wouldn't even ask their girl to do. So what are some things you've been asked to do that are off the beaten path? Mm-hmm. I would say... Um, you know, there's really not much because they've shared a lot with me, too. You know, I, I, I can go to my NBA friends and be like, yo, do you have any other friends who, like want to hook up? And this is where I can get like things arranged for me. So it's pretty much on the neutral. There's nothing they could ask me that would be far left. No, but did, have you ever pegged one? No, I haven't done that. But everyone knows that's not my jam because I've never done it on film. Right. So everyone but you knows. Would, but would you do it in your personal life? I just haven't been compelled to do it. I'm mm-hmm. not against it, but it just isn't something that's come my it's way. Not, yeah, yeah. I haven't gone there. So. 
but you know, people talk to me about it. And you know, a lot of players will ask me, how do they tell their girl that, that they, want they want to do these things? Or right. how do they discuss this? You know, and so now there's a lot more sites that are shooting more norm- pretty girls doing this. And I right. think it's easier. It's more neutral. But no, I haven't gotten there yet. But I'm a slow learner like you. Remember, I've only <laughs> yeah. been doing anal. We're very alike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very alike. Now, have you ever ate someone's ass and it was dirty, like disgusting? Oh, and you were come like, no. On. I'm just asking. This is another I'm- thing I just don't do. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't do like it, food. and I, I I hope I'm not a disappointment, guys. <laughs> out there that like it. I just don't know. I, mean, I don't like doing it anymore either. I used to do it all the time, but I don't like doing it anymore. I've never done like it in my shut life. Up. <laughs> Wait. I'll tell you this: a director wanted me to do it in a movie, and he called me. He's like, "Here's what I need you to do." He's like, "Take your hand right now," and I'm on my phone. He's like, "Take your hand, and make a fist." Okay? He goes, "That's the guy's ass." He goes, "Did it? You tell that? He goes, "All you gotta do is." Yeah, that. she I'm told like, us that too. L'Oreal <laughs> said that. That's it, and it doesn't taste like pennies. That's Gigi it. says, oh, that's, that with "What kind of ass you eating?" The shitty that one. This oh, is but isn't that what, what's her name said on but, on the episode? But Gigi yeah. agreed, yeah. and I did agree. But not that it's the taste; it's the feeling. It was a feeling like when you mm-hmm. stick your tongue on a nine volt battery. Like it was a different feeling. That's all. <laughs> I didn't say it tastes like. Well, don't get this girl. Very <laughs> 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 I know it's very common. This is where I feel like I am so not as open minded as I thought I was. Lisa and you still got a lot to go. <laughs> like, so I, my boyfriend and I have this this game we play with because we do Uh-oh. only couple things, right? All of our friends are married, right? What would you Angela. say? Uh oh. It's like a game. Uh-oh. We just talk about eating ass, and he's just like, we have to get it on. Listen, listen, it, it ties into what we were talking about. So we'll ask, you know, like in front of the girl, always in front of the wife, we ask if the guy likes to get fingers in his ass. Or if he likes to get his ass licked, he's not gonna. What kind of game yes. is this? No lie, no lie. Only one. We've asked six couples, and only one and couple it, said no. Oh, wow. the rest of them was like, you know. Did you ask these like, couples? Because he could like, lie. Man, she be, he be <laughs> like, man, this girl be trying to eat my ass. I'm not with that. You with that? And they'll be like, yeah. See, guys will admit guys to that. Guys like it. But yeah. it's the finger thing that they don't want to admit They don't mind a tongue. To. You'd yeah, be they're... surprised. They're admitting to the fingers, too. Really? Yes. <laughs> I swear. Gee, did I tell you about this? We all go on couples. Like, we go couples. We, couples be, events and couples Couple, couples, couple every night, day. Yeah. Couple, couple, couple. And we'll sit there and we'll be like, yo, do you like this? You like and a couple fingers? A guy can't <laughs> lie in front of his girl because she's like, Mm-hmm. Nigga, right? With the face. She's like, don't play. You like it. <laughs> yeah. So you'd be surprised, man. A lot of people are doing it. A lot of people we're are not. doing it. We're yep. definitely. I've definitely heard. like, because he's on the gram. So <laughs> yeah, he ain't with it. I've heard a guy say that I know, I've done it to him, like stuck my finger up his ass. And he said like, no, he doesn't do it. So I've heard somebody actually lie about it. They all about say it. no, right. they, they don't lie. do it. They, they all say you, like, they don't like a tongue. They all say <laughs> they don't let you do the finger until you stick your tongue in there and the finger comes to exactly. follow. Exactly. Okay. But it'd, be, it'd usually be the guys that be like, I would never let anybody do that to me. That's the ones that's taking two you fingers. You put two fingers in them, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> come in. <laughs> come in. Oh, hey, you want to hear busted out a strap on? I mean, this is my next question. No, but I want to. Ooh. <laughs> I'm with a guy that definitely won't let me do it, so okay. it'll never happen, but yeah, I was. No, I was. I, I, just on a guy. I don't even do toys at all. Like I, I want to do on that. On yourself, even. No, I don't do toys. I suggest wearing a strap on under your pants for a day and just walking around. <laughs> Sometimes with when a I, I, think it's I put fit. one on just to fuck with people because I feel so much more like bossy like adjusting yeah. it all the time right so like, yeah just wear cargo pants over no they're gonna be like L'Oreal's a hermaphrodite I, I wonder if having a dick is fun you, you do it with toys. some gray sweatpants on you, you guys toys. is it fun to have a dick so there's toys that work they with an yes, app it's fun. now it's okay. fun to have a dick you know, you know there's toys with an app and your guy can be playing with it from no, an app somewhere else and he can play with your dick on the app listen if I had a dick for a day the first thing I would do is swing it around in a helicopter and then I would go fuck as many bitches as I now I would get my dick sucked I want to like come on somebody's <laughs> face like uh, uh, uh. you want to come on somebody's <laughs> face <laughs> I would get my dick That's like so all oh, day that is like. your reenaction <laughs> of what it's like when you're too drunk <laughs> yeah okay that's what I want to be like that's I say I would just be fucking squirt, uh, you can see that like you were quirky or something <laughs> I don't know <laughs> 
That's what I would do. <laughs> All right, so Lisa Ann, you have some homework to do yourself. Okay, what's my homework? We told you just now. You got to um, eat some ass. Uh, it's too much work for me. I just don't think I should have to do that much work in bed. You know what I mean? I feel like I have earned my trump card. And <laughs> okay. that Literally. I do minimal. You know what I mean? Like, I'll give a blowjob job because I want to, but everything else is really going to be on you. You know what I mean? You're going to be the one where your legs are sore. I'm going to be the one that's super relaxed. <laughs> that's that's how your I feel. Secret. That's how you able to take these big black dicks because you got be, them she's very relaxed. Chilling. Did she relax her jaw? Did you give you those pointers or did you figure that out? Oh, I Jessica? figured that out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I want to ask you um, this, Lisa Ann. So is it better for you when you work with somebody that you've been working with, that you're comfortable with, or do you like new dick? I like working with people I'm comfortable with. Mm-hmm. And I really have a tough time meeting someone for the first time on the shoot. Uh, it's awkward for me. I like to get to know them a little bit, look forward to it. Right. Um, now, if I do do that, which I had to a couple of weeks ago because someone canceled. I used a guy that like I literally called 25 people and asked because they know me. They know what I'm good with Mm -hmm. because sometimes the kids come on set, the young guys, and they're so nervous they talk too much. (laughs) And I have to tell the the director like, yo, my knees are welding fucking shut. Like, I don't want to fuck this dude. He's got to shut the fuck (laughs) up. (laughs) They are like, just tell him to stop, you know? And so, and it grinds me a bit and (laughs) they don't know how to touch me or not touch me. And Mm -hmm. when a guy gets nervous with me, the first couple times I'll be bruised after the scene because when they're trying to not come they'll like squeeze your arm and not really think about it and put their weight on you and so but the guys that know you know everything how you like to be propped up what your mm-hmm. better side is I you know agree. all these like they know I want to show my triceps so they'll pull my yeah, arm yeah, back yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they know me and also it's fun it's like a extended dating life where right. you know what they, they like too you know how to help them come too mm-hmm. like I know when I work with Rob Piper all we have to do is kiss and if I if he's starting to lose his edge a little bit all we have to do is kiss make eye contact and connect and he's fucking hard again that's so powerful right? mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what do you guys think too Is I, I'm sure all of y'all like just because everybody's in relationships except Laura yeah mm-hmm. but that's good she's been in a long term relationship and now she's single which is mm-hmm. amazing how because, long was your long term uh, it was like about five years it's almost five time. years it was four five years. yeah so I think it's fun to be single after you've been in a relationship that mm-hmm. didn't turn out the way you anticipated so right. it's time to have a good time so do you like being with somebody that you're used to or is it really fun like getting a new dick see with me like y'all already know like I'll deal with somebody I dealt with before before I'll just go out and, get and a find new. a whole yeah. new cause it something. could be a waste mm-hmm. No, sometimes like, you gotta go dig in the archives <laughs> you, you get what I'm saying and yeah. I might not have had no problem with the person that you know we it might have just been we moved away or sure. right, whatever. something yeah. happened it's like it would never just be somebody that I actually like broke up with and had right. a big problem Thanks. like sure. it wouldn't be that but somebody that I dealt with before yes absolutely I'd rather do that than uh, find out somebody got a pinky dick and I just wasted my yeah pussy. I'd much rather be with somebody That's that I already women know are different. is good and bad because well, men body. are gonna do it just to do it and yeah. we're also more afraid you know mm-hmm. men can invite a woman over and not think she's gonna rob them what, what, right. oh, yes, beat we them do, girl. or whatever <laughs> or, you know but we, we we have to be more guarded so to right. just put ourselves with a complete stranger is jarring you know exactly mm-hmm. yeah no I think physically that's true but women definitely do rob men that's true they love Nowadays. the basketball players these mm-hmm. girls makes me so angry <laughs> makes me angry because then when I listen to sports radio I have to call into every sports show because I hear these broadcasters talking about the player like he's a fucking idiot and I always say to the broadcaster like yo you've never had two girls offer to come home to your place at the same fucking right. time you Not don't even know the mindset so don't be so judgmental he's right. just young I mean you know you nobody cares about you so you may have done the same thing <laughs> but nobody but cares nobody's about you. you're not on the news for it you know what I mean but it, it, I take it personally as an insult because they, they don't know the Nobody situation. Nobody cares about you is the best line. True. <laughs> That's the name of this episode. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Nobody, Nobody cares, cares about, about you. About you. <laughs> All right. Now, people always ask questions, right? They ask lip service questions. So we want to get your input. All right. I've been married for over six years and with my spouse for more than 10. Our entire relationship has been a constant argument about sex. I've always felt like I'm the only person that initiates or puts effort into it. We go weeks at a time without sex. I feel like my only option at this point is to file for divorce. I don't want to step out. We have kids, so it's tough to just leave the marriage, but I'm tired of feeling neglected and sexually frustrated. We are in our early 30s. Wait, is this the woman or the man? This is a woman. She's been married and... He's cheating. He's cheating. He doesn't have a drive. 
They, no, it's been weeks cheating. since they had sex. He's having sex. He's just not having sex. No, her. she said since the beginning of their relationship. They've been married for over six years. They've always argued about sex. Yeah, they've always argued about sex because I would she's say, always the one initiating. And they've been together for 10 years. They have to go to a sex Either therapist. Either She said they gay. went to counseling and she, several Either way, times. he's fucking somebody else. And, you know, some guys just don't have a drive. Um, A friend of mine, she she's with somebody and he... She's always wanting to have sex and he he just doesn't have a drive. Like he's always tired and he kind of has like a penis issue. It doesn't get all the way hard. Erectile dysfunction. But is it for her or does it just... Did it ever get hard? It's getting hard for Timmy. In the beginning, <laughs> in the beginning, um, in the beginning, they had some good sex, but I feel like as they've gotten used to each other, it, the sex started to lack. That's why I don't believe when guys say that. Like, because every time I hear a situation like that, they're always like, "Well, you know, he's probably having dysfunctions." I'm, I always ask my first question: Did y'all ever have good sex before? And they're like, "Yeah, it used to be amazing." So that's yes. not what the problem yes. is. He yes, don't have a yes, problem, yes. but stress sometimes can trigger that too 100 percent, and also sometimes the man doesn't look at the woman the same when she becomes a mother i mean that's mm-hmm. yes. right that's something that many women deal yeah, with or when you gain a couple they didn't want to have sex yeah. with their the child's mother after they had the baby <laughs> was i know a lot of guys very long time. time it was somebody on the show who told us that like i wouldn't touch her after that right that's too but bad. then they ended up no, they ended up getting back. eventually yeah i can't remember who yeah, it was it was somebody yeah yeah people go through things and i think like yeah. financially if you're going through it at work and things aren't going well and you don't feel good it is like sex is a very mental thing also like think about us like sometimes you're mad you're stressed out things aren't going well you don't really feel like I feel like that always helps me. Yeah, when I'm stressed out, Stress I'm like, sex. oh, I need yeah. some dick. That's why I <laughs> but don't I get see it. what you're saying. And also, kids line. are a huge responsibility. Right. And when you have people kids like tired. that, people are tired. Well, I don't see, know that's how. different. With the kids running around, it's probably not sexy. They're yelling and throwing shit. And no, yeah, yeah. That's probably what the problem is. And then the sometimes kids. people get resentful in relationships. Like, if you feel like I'm home with the kids, I'm doing all the work, and you're kind of resentful. And you're like, why do I, I need, need to, to do get everything? Away or resentment something. Yeah. is the silent killer of all relationships. Was the first thing I learned when I went to marriage counseling when I was married in my twenties. Mm. It is true, resentment is the silent killer because it just builds up. It's 2019, and everyone needs a great pair of wireless earbuds. It's what I use when I'm working out, when I'm walking in the street, and I can't use my hands. It's so convenient, but it's expensive, right? Before you go dropping hundreds of dollars on a pair, you need to check out the wireless earbuds from Raycon. Raycon earbuds start at about half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds on the market. And guess what? They sound just as amazing. The company was actually co-founded by Ray J and celebrities like Snoop Dogg are already obsessed. Raycon's E50 wireless earbuds have totally changed the game for me. They're so comfortable and you can take them anywhere. It's easy. Unlike some of your other wireless options, Raycon earbuds are both stylish and discreet with no dangling wires or stems. And of course, they don't just look great. They sound great, too. My secret is I always leave them charging in the car. So whenever I have to get out and walk around, they're ready to go. Even when I carry one of my small clutches to go to an event, they fit in the clutch. Raycon offers their wireless earbuds for everyone in a range of fun colors and at an unbeatable price. Go to buyraycon.com slash lip service and get 20% off your order. That's at buyraycon.com slash lip service for 20% off Raycon wireless earbuds. If you've been eyeing a pair, now is the time to get an amazing deal. It's already inexpensive, so with that extra 20% off, imagine... One more time, buyraycon.com, buyraycon.com slash lip service. When was the last time you ate a breakfast that you felt good about? Not a bowl of sugary, nasty cereal that you inhaled before running out the door. I'm talking about a breakfast that's nourishing your body. You know, I'm big on being healthy. I get up at four o'clock in the morning every day and it's so important what I put in my system. Well, my breakfast have been completely transformed ever since I started getting Daily Harvest. It's ready in five minutes max and I have real organic fruits and vegetables before I've even finished my tea in the morning. Daily Harvest delivers carefully sourced, chef-crafted smoothies, savory bowls, overnight oats, and more built on fruits and vegetables. Everything stays in your freezer until you're ready to eat it. Choose from more than 50 nourishing options for any time of the day, ready to blend smoothies, savory harvest bowls, soups, and more. Each single serving cup takes one step to prepare. All you have to do is add water or milk to a smoothie or heat up a harvest bowl. 
All of Daily Harvest ingredients are carefully sourced for maximum nourishment and flavor. You can actually see all of the ingredients when you open the cup. Daily Harvest is the easiest, most delicious way to load up on fruits and vegetables first thing in the morning, before bed, and any time in between. Go to daily-harvest.com and enter promo code LIPSERVICE to get three cups free in your first box. That's promo code LIPSERVICE for three free Daily Harvest cups at daily-harvest.com. daily-harvest.com. Tell us about this marriage in your 20s. Yes, girl. Yes, there was a marriage. We're still very good friends. It was just our wedding anniversary, May 12th. We always talk on our birthdays and our wedding anniversary. Oh, that's nice. I was young. He was my first and really only boyfriend of my whole life. Wow. Um, I'm just a free spirit that really likes to be on our own and though we had so many great years we were together for seven years only married for two mm-hmm. um but we traveled together and had a really good time we partied a lot it was in the day when i was like ecstasy was everything <laughs> and it was the mid not early 90s i'm going through that phase and to just have a partner in crime but you grow apart and things get stressful and words get said and i'm one of those people that once words are said i have a really hard time forgetting forgiving, forgiving right. and you know um so we just decided to we, we did not have a prenup so of course i made money so i had to buy my way out of the marriage but, no but money is nothing like you can always make more money but your, your happiness friend it is what it is. You know what I mean? That's how the books work. You know, that's how the nice. state work. But we had we, <laughs> we, so nice. we did have three roles. We had uh, you. Ha- he had to move back to Florida if we split up. I got to stay in California where I was living. Whatever who whatever friends you brought in. You you, you get with, you take right, with you right. and we don't start, and we and we do not stay in touch with each other's families and so we really stuck to that so it was a respectful breakup mm, had he nice. stayed in California we would have been back and forth for like three years yeah I don't yeah. like it him. would have been so great. Right. <laughs> um, I'm listening because he took your money yeah I feel like we need to rob him he's one of the <laughs> actors <laughs> but, was, but was he supportive of your career I wasn't shooting at that time um, I well, met him so, but you were making money so I you, was dancing and he went on the road with me so we just kind of partied on the road and hooked up with other girls you know what I mean he was living a good life yeah because in other words if he was <laughs> supportive was and fun. working with you then he does deserve of course that's oh, why like, I looked at okay. it because like, his social wasn't paying in anything you know what I mean social right. security so it was my responsibility and I didn't see it I wasn't bitter about it right as long as you're not bitter I was bitter because he tried to take my signed Michael Jordan jersey and on the what? very end yeah because we went to a mediator and all, <laughs> we had all of our paperwork everything's neutral this is the number you came up with because he was like show me the money and I'll go and I'm like just come up with a number and wow. you can go yeah those are the words that you can't take back and I see on there Michael Jordan jersey. I'm like, fuck no. Now I got to go hire a lawyer. So I go and I hire a lawyer. <laughs> Wait, so it was yours. It was like, yours. Why was I didn't purchase it. I got it a random way on the road from a fan that he didn't believe it was going to be real. And I paid to get it free. I, I was mine, right? How dare he try to steal a gift? So the lawyer says to me, this is fine. Just says the Michael Jordan jersey. Doesn't say autographed, authenticated. <laughs> so you get a tiny Michael Jordan jersey. He's like, jersey. you want to big five right now? You buy him a Jordan jersey. And give it to you him. You walk in there. You're done. I was like, oh. So like every year on his birthday. Oh, no. oh. Every year on his birthday, that's the only thing he gets to me is that picture like you're the best ex-husband ever. Happy birthday. With the Michael There's Jordan jersey. Jordan jersey. That's Still hilarious. That's really funny. Mm-hmm. Hilarious. So, did y'all have like a real wedding or was it like a... We did have a real mm-hmm. wedding. We got married in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Oh, wow. At an old mansion called the Sarah Mansion. It was just a small wedding of like 40 people. Um, but we did. I did a butterfly release, Aww. which was so great. Because it's not even legal anymore to do that. Oh, it was so awesome. Mm-hmm. I, I was so much so beautiful but it was a special day um you can troll very far back on my instagram i should place one as a flashback friday yeah that's a good i'll do a wedding friday. photo <laughs> but it was an experience and i think people should try things without clamoring on that it has to work not everything has to work and when you start to argue i draw the line fast i'm not going past 90 days of arguing this isn't getting better we fight every day to make money we fight every day to be safe do you really want to come home and argue with your spouse no, no. and we had a business at a time we had I had a day spa as well mm-hmm. as well as being on the road dancing and I just moved out and lived on the massage bed for months while I let him just pack up his shit because I was wow. like I don't even want to come back in here and have you standing over me trying to change my mind mm-hmm. I will just live there and fall off that massage bed about once a week which no. is like this <laughs> is <laughs> sucked but we had a shower we had everything I needed and it was just easier you know I just wanted it to be done mm-hmm. I wanted to move and forward and you got what you needed <laughs> yeah. she said I fell mm-hmm. off oh 
once a week. Once a week. That sucks. Sorry. And they're not that comfortable either. They're good for a massage, but eight hour night sleep, not great. You're like, dude, you was mad. Yeah, they get a couch, huh? So mad. I was thinking the couch was in the lobby where people could look in the window and see. I was sleeping about that life. It was so private that I was doing that. I had my shit in my car every day. My staff did not know that was happening. Oh my God. Now, here's the next question. My boyfriend in two months keeps gifting me with lavish gifts. I'm very appreciative. However, he loves to brag about how much each thing costs as he gives it to me. That bag could pay your rent for a month. (gasps) Here's the catch. (laughs) Here's the catch. Here's the catch. It's all fake as hell. (gasps) No! I don't require these lavish gifts. I'm fine with whatever. I just don't know how to bring this up. Should I bring it up? I know it will embarrass him, but I do feel deceived and embarrassed that he tells my friends how real everything is and they know better. So it's not fake? The, the products are fake? Yes. Oh, <gasps> and he's bragging. Oh he's bringing to her like China Man Chanel Good bags. <laughs> Canal Street oh Louis Vuitton. God, I want to beat the fuck out of him. <laughs> yeah. Because I was going to say and if then they're real, about it. just fucking sell them all, break up with them, and cash out right <laughs> yeah, now. Right, yeah. Cut your fucking yeah. off. Listen, that's the biggest thing right now in luxury consignment. Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah. Poshmark. Now I mean, use this the new new. Not if it's fake. It has <laughs> to be the we are, we are now, use this the new new. We are now yes, a circular absolutely. economy, which is mm-hmm. amazing for has brands. Any, has anybody ever given y'all anything fake? Nah. Somebody get one of my customers back when I was a dancer. I used to be a dancer. Yeah. I was gonna bring this up, but okay. I didn't want to, you know, interrupt you. But there was a couple times where I wanted to mention it. But back when I was a dancer, um, this guy was like, "What do you want for Christmas?" And I was like, "A Cartier watch." And then he came in <laughs> like right before Christmas with a fake ass Cartier watch. It was so fake that it was still like in a little plastic wrap. No. And I was just like, "But that's fake." And he was just like, "Look, like, how do you know? Like, it looks fake." Like, so <laughs> but yeah, that's fake. <laughs> did you think he could afford the Cartier watch? Yeah. Did you think he would do it? I did. I was dumb. I'm like, oh, I told my friends, like, oh my God, he said he buy me a watch. And then when he came in with the watch, I was like, that shit fake. Oh, Jesus. Oh, so did they get off with this fake shit? Like, that's bold to me. That was like in the very beginning, too. Like, when I was still working at Delilah's, which is the very first club in I ever Philly? worked at. Yeah, yeah. That was oh the very first club God. I ever worked at. I remember when that club was the grand opening. With, with Summer and that whole thing. With in the, the 90s, yeah, yeah, yeah. when they put that was mm-hmm. the first club in Philly that had lap dances. And mm-hmm. it was the first time I ever did a lap dance, and I didn't do another I one was for just 20 fucking years. Why? What happened during his lap dance? The, I, it was I hope they did slap you too. It was twenty bucks at the time. <laughs> yep. Um, and, and at the time, this was a. He played for the Sixers, so I was like, okay, I want to do a dance for him. And I later saw him in life and told him the story. Uh, and he touched me the whole time. And then I walked over to the manager, and I'm to like, touch. right. And I said to the manager, like, all right, like this is twenty bucks. How much you get? He goes, we get half. I go, fuck uh, this. I'm not what? doing dance. I'll just collect my tips on stage. Yeah. It just wasn't worth it to me because right. you are fighting the guy's hands yeah, off the whole of you. Time. I didn't do another one for twenty years. Damn. Mm. I just hustled on at stage. Least get yeah. you your money, like yeah, full. But yeah, now I see stuff go down, like the it girls. But Silas is a fun club. I was literally just there yesterday. Oh, it's still open. Yeah. Yes, I was yeah, just good, there. Good, clean, fun. That's yeah, their logo. I danced there like three or four weeks ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. Just oh, there. We might all need to go to Delilah. Yeah, <laughs> it's a fun club. It is. It really is. So nobody else never got a fake? Mm-mm. And I would be so insulted. What if I didn't know it was a fake? And then I like rocked it out. My friends were like, oh, that's fake or something. <gasps> See, that's the problem. So, now, look, the problem with him is that he's passing it off and bragging. One thing that you're passing off, but the fact that you're bragging about how much it costs, saying like, oh, this could pay your rent when it really can't even pay the cable bill. Like, <laughs> Yeah, because on. if he wasn't bragging, it would be a kind of the thought, uh, the the, thought, that, the thought that came. Well, the thought or maybe somebody's right. selling to him, telling him that it's real, but he can't be bragging about how much it costs if you really didn't pay that much right, for it. Right, because it might be you know his saying? man that's a scammer. He's exactly. like, Exactly. Oh, I got this bag. Oh, that's true. Because a lot China of man. people buy fake stuff, stuff from yeah. scammers. I know yeah. some people who have done that. Yes, yes. you do. No yeah. matter so real or fake, you should never talk brag. about a gift that you exactly. how much. He shouldn't so, brag about how much it costs. And don't discount rent. Like, don't, t- that's yeah. not. Yeah. yeah. I would, I'd, I'd, I'd be like, like I'd rather you pay my rent. I was just about to say that. Take the bag back and pay the rent. Listen, so my advice for her, I think you should call them out. Yeah, you definitely have to call him out. I think I you should call him out. I would say break up that. with him. You yeah, gotta call him out. Well, yeah, clearly, but and it's only <laughs> and been two only months. Been two, right? They've only been dating mm. for two months, so oh. you need to call him out on his BS and throw all that fake ass bullshit back at him and end the whole relationship she because you're not going she... nowhere fast. And you know what? You can say, um, I'm not sure if you're aware, but this isn't real, right? I will just be like, you bought me all this fake ass shit. <laughs> I'd be like, instead of buying me fake bags, why don't you pay the rent since it could pay for my rent? Hello, right? All right, broke. I'm not gonna lie. When I was a kid, I probably had a fake. 
I did too. But I, but I, but I, I, I had it. Nobody gave it. It was fake. Yeah. Yeah. I never wear that. I had a fake Gucci bag. When we was younger, I feel like, well, all my friends and say everybody used to go get their little fake shit. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Up yeah. and down street. Yeah. Yeah. They, they had good fakes too. Yeah. They yeah. had really yeah. good fakes. Like yeah, but that's what I'm saying. When you were teenagers, when you really couldn't afford to buy the real thing. I had somebody give me gold earrings once, but he just handed it to me in his hand. I think he stole them from somebody. No. Well, at least they were real. I'd rather you steal them. Like, no. I think he robbed somebody. He, he was, was like, here. Got your <laughs> <laughs> they, they just with his sisters. <laughs> <laughs> he took him. All right. So uh, here's the next question. I got out of an abusive relationship about two months ago. I've been dating a little bit and met a guy that's super nice. At first, I was overly cautious because of stuff I've already been through, but I realized that's not really fair to him. So I opened up more. Now that I've been less on guard, he's showing less interest. Mm. I also overheard him tell a friend that he thinks I talk too much. Mm. I know I talk a lot. But why is he talking shit about me and not just telling me? It just seems like everything is worse on the weekends. I think because he's hanging with his guys and he gets some with the boys energy. He's been really sweet and seemed like he actually wanted a relationship until the weekend and he's with his guys. He kind of gets douchey and acts like a fuck boy on these nights. Because he's fucking his like, boys. He's fucking someone else. Um, <laughs> Which one is the real sure on this one? On this one, I'm sure. Uh, he's fucking someone else. Boys. Yeah. He's fight, picking fights with her so that he can go out and do his own thing. That's what mm-hmm. they do, that's, sis. That's, 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 that's what they, what they do. do. And I learned how to do it and I do it too. Oh shit! Me too. <laughs> I've done it when it's just I'm not going out and having fun. I just don't want to be bothered that night. Yeah, I just don't too. want to put makeup that on. Too. I'm already home, and right. I'm just like you know, I'll be mm-hmm. like, I'll get salty. And just then... bring up some old shit that yeah. always works, and then be like, see, this is exactly why. Like, <laughs> and then that's it. Like, don't answer your phone. You can get away with anything. Yes. You can go to China. You and you know go... how guys that when you get in an argument, they'll just like fall back yeah. and leave you alone, and yeah, you're like, all right. I'll go away for the weekend. Because <laughs> they probably talk it to their side, bitch. So they're like, probably. All right, she's mad. <laughs> How are you about guys coming to your house? There's just a handful of guys that come to my house. And mm-hmm. there's my main guy is like the guy uh, that spent the most time at my house. But I don't really go out much. So mm-hmm. it's hard for me to be in public with a guy because I'm on a date and dudes will just walk up and be like, yo, can I have a photo? And I just <laughs> feel like so awkward mm. for them. So if you're going to see me, I'm, you're going to see me at my house. Mm. Okay. I cook. I love to cook. What's your specialty? Anything. I'm vegan, so I cook a lot of good vegan stuff, but I also make Italian. I'll cook whatever anybody wants. Nice. There we go. I have a grill, too, and I do grill. All right, so here's the last one. So, my boyfriend, baby daddy, is currently in prison facing a bit of time. But prior to him going and made an agreement, I would stick by his side. (laughs) <laughs> I didn't know <laughs> Stephanie got a laugh she like that never works uh, alright I didn't know the full extent of everything going on because we were living apart during the time he got in trouble well once discoveries and witness recordings started coming out one of the witnesses was a female he used to date well she goes on to say the, my dude was over her house trying to get with her blah blah but he never mentioned her before we made our agreement for me to stick by his side I'm a woman of my word so would I be wrong for leaving him while he's locked up because of this he has cheated on me in the past and he has been physically mentally abusive I'm confused on what to do bye, bye girl physically get out. and mentally bye. Mm-hmm. just leave oh, no, that no, no, man no, no, yeah. in jail <laughs> and let his witness support him through that bitch he, he, <laughs> he, he's a witness yeah, she let, can still know that she's right. stuck to her word but his situation voided out her. Yeah, it's and void. also they it's weren't voided. together when they were when, when this started to happen the downside is she has a child with him and she's mm-hmm. still gonna have to have relations and be civil with him but dating him don't wait mm-hmm. they guys you weren't on those recordings girl and you don't have to be a witness exactly Hello. right yeah. that's true, what I have to true. say that's God giving you a that's sign true. Mm-hmm. get out okay <laughs> get out yeah. he spares you yes. get out of the situation and you should never feel guilty about something like that cause guess what you locked up I found out you were cheating thank you God for giving me an out Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Sometimes you just have to go with what God is giving you, the signs that you're getting from the universe or whatever people want to call it. And it may like I'm people just, like me. Yeah, <laughs> you know, go. You you have to take the signs. Like God can only send you so much before mm-hmm. you know for you to notice. You're gonna keep skipping off on your, the right way to go, the right path. Mm-hmm. And he had to know right? she was gonna find out some way somehow. Yeah, that's the that's a sign. Those are public. That's a sign. He should have gave her yeah. a little heads He should have been honest. Yeah. Now, if he was honest in the beginning mm-hmm. and was like, "Listen, this is what I going fucked on. up. It's this, this, that, and the third. But he's not doing none of that. He's lying convincing her something he probably still fucking with somebody else like it's just you gotta chill cause if he's hiding that 
Who knows what the fuck mm-hmm. else he's hiding? Also, Timmy. I'm embarrassed oh. that this bitch you used to fuck is now a witness. <laughs> exactly. I'm embarrassed for you. Your dick was my trash. Friend, my friend went and did three years like in that. jail, yeah. and in her discovery was another girl at the ATM. Because her and her man at the ATM pictures in her discovery of her man cheating mm-hmm. on her. And she didn't know nothing and about the girl. And meanwhile, she's sitting in, in jail, jail. Three years. Some guys are more upset yeah. when they get locked up that you have their phone. Than anything else. Oh, man, she got my phone. But they could, they could approve who has their phones or not. Yes. So, okay. like, you come pick. Yeah, I know, mad people in jail. Yeah, but it's, like, it's like either you give your phone to your girl or you yeah. don't. Yeah, and, and the fans you get make, that shit. You, know, you gotta yeah. make a choice. <laughs> They'd probably rather give it to the, the feds. feds. That's yeah. Wow. Just, just go on and take it. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. I just take the bid. <laughs> we gonna give your phone to your girl. No. No, no, no. no, no. Take, take the bid. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'd rather go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> Niggas with dad rather go to jail. Right. Uh, I, I, I so, Lisa Ann, what would you say is the difference between how you used to have sex when you were younger and what you do now? Um, now I'm more able to communicate what I want. I mm-hmm. think as women, we just gravitate towards that. And I also just don't waste my time. You know, I know I got to be connected to somebody to enjoy personal sex mm-hmm. with them. So it's like, it's really hard for me to do the fuck boy thing at this point in my life. You know what I mean? I, mm-hmm. I've, I've crossed over that. It was great while it lasted, but now it's like, if you're just a fucking idiot and I'm just fucking you anyway, then what does that say about me? Right. right. <laughs> that's that's changing. That's that you're I, fucking an idiot. Fuck boy lover. <laughs> but it took me until about 45 to get there. So, I mean, <laughs> wow. this is a new wow. thing. I mean, it's only two years old where I'm like, still still sticking like the fuck boys text and I'm like not driven to make a move not responding they think I don't have that number anymore just leave it that way can you remember your first orgasm ever and what hmm. you thought like what's going on here? I remember the mine. first like really 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 good sex I had was on set Wow, uh, really? Yeah, because I just felt like I was in such a safe place. It was a girl that I knew from her coming to Pennsylvania and dancing. Her name was Lena, and she helped me get in the business. And it was a guy that I ended up kind of dating a bit because I thought I was in love with him, but really it was just the best sex. Yeah, the sex mm-hmm. right. And it was just this comfortable environment of a three-way scene, and I just felt like it was my second movie. I'm in L.A. This is what I'm doing right now. It's such a sexual environment. It's so empowering to just be that free. It's like you're in another zone for the whole day you're shooting it's just a freedom for me Mm -hmm. so that was really probably my best like orgasms where I understood what was happening someone was talking to me and explaining it to me and you know it was like having a coach through that's her first memorable one yeah (laughs) Yeah. Easton Pennsylvania where I grew up nah not so great my my first boyfriend was named Guy Um, (laughs) that says anything it was was sex it was Guy Italian (laughs) Just lame. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Stephanie? You said you remember your first I orgasm. I remember my first orgasm because it was the first... All right. Um, I'm from Chelsea. I'm from Manhattan. And we have... We, back in the day, we had Channel 35 at nighttime. It was the box I know, during exactly. the day. Yeah, I remember that. Remember about, it was yeah. the box? I, I think it was Brooklyn. Channel 31. I think Brooklyn <laughs> had it, too. Yeah, um, we had it. Yeah, you could order videos. You had yeah, to pay. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. The box. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, and then at Imagine night... Imagine that. At night, it'll be like 957 number commercials all night. Like little, yeah, it'll be like porn, yeah, porn. It'll be like quick, and then it'll cut off and be, yeah. And then you gotta change the channel and switch it back, (laughs) right? So one night I was up watching that by myself. I was like ten years old, and I decided to masturbate. I didn't know what I was doing. I just decided to masturbate, and I came, and I was like, "Oh my god, that's what sex is for!" Right? I'm not leaving the house. (laughs) <laughs> I couldn't believe it. That was my first orgasm. I remember I was young. I Did was you 10. know what it was? Like I came. No, that's and I knew what it was then. I Damn, I'm gonna know. <laughs> what I about you, Gigi? You don't remember though. yours? She's like, no, I don't remember. You don't I remember, don't remember the first time that? You came? No. Hmm. No, I knew I was really young and I masturbated, but I don't remember like the time. I don't remember, I don't remember how time. old I was. I don't remember. Exactly. You know what? I remember the first time I came from oral from getting eaten out. I don't remember the first time I had an orgasm, but I remember the first time I came from that. Because before that, I didn't think I loved it at all. I was like, eh, you know. Very few guys are good at it. That's right. But this one guy did it, and I was like, this is amazing. Like yes, <laughs> I remember the first time I realized I had an internal orgasm. Mm-hmm. But it probably wasn't the first one I had, but it was the first time I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. Okay. Oh, it's because oh. it was the difference of mm-hmm. like, you know, the outside and the internal. So it was that one that I was just like, oh, okay. I remember that one. But um, yeah, no. All right. Which way do you like better to internally come? I mean, to um, come from, come from, no, or, no, right, or come from, from vaginal. vaginal. 
both. I mean, it depends <laughs> who you you're go. with, if they can make you come internally, you know, it mm-hmm. depends who you're with. I mean, very few guys can make you come mm-hmm. with oral because again, they're not that they great at it. So mm-hmm. kind of both, but you know, I find that connection for me is what can make me come the hardest. So it's like right. mm-hmm. the guy that I like the most Amen. in my life, like we can just have sex and I just start coming. So it's just like, I'm so into him that that's just so like, emotionally mm-hmm. connected. And it's not even, sometimes it don't even be that like the dick is so good and the sex is so good. It's just your connection. Yeah. Because then when you don't like them as much anymore, that dick is so trash. It's yeah. not even the same. Right. The dick is not that You're good. like, what yes, was I, I thinking? Yeah, it's like, like, ugly I dick. I true. Agree. The <laughs> dick, this shit was crazy. Like, why is right. he sweating on me? Right. <laughs> I hate that vein. Ew. Oh. <laughs> All right. No, don't kiss me. His balls are uneven. Save <laughs> that position. You know, you got to do that one first so that you don't have to sweat. <laughs> do it right. in the angles so that, like, when I'm on set, I plan the whole scene around making sure that I'm not going to be sweat on. Uh, <laughs> right. I like do that, that position while you're not in the hot bedroom. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Have you, you ever been, up, get down. Mm-hmm. Have you ever been with a guy that was so sweaty his suit was like dripping? Drip in your oh, eyes. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. it's I would like, never <laughs> fuck him again. It's my workplace, man. Yeah. yeah you know? man. It's another day at the office. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Well, Lisa, and we thank you so much for coming and hanging out with us. This was eye opening. So good. Yes. And people Very love you. We love Can you I get too. different homework though? Can you get different homework? Can I get different homework? Okay, what's something else that you haven't done? Because you haven't done that, and that's like pretty basic. Cool. Does it have to be sexual? Can it just be other homework? No. You know what I mean? Like, oh, that's that's sexual. All right, then we'll have to, maybe the listeners can come up with something. Okay, yes. maybe they will. And you can tweet but it. They, at me. I bet you they want you to eat ass, though. Yeah. <laughs> and Angela has to get fucked in the ass. Yeah. So that's that's, hard home, too, that's hard yeah, homework. So. I think I'm going to go try. I'm going to go buy me some. <laughs> Unclinch that jaw. I'm going to buy me some out, home not loop, eating ass. And I'm going to, like, not clinch my jaw. And I'm going to try. Man, but she's the word of the day. Man, just spread them. Ew. <laughs> I don't know. That's crazy. That's for no, love. You gotta that. like really, really, like really, really, really fuck with somebody. You can't just go around eating everybody ass. Like. We didn't say that. She has her main guy that she likes a lot that she comes all the time from. She could okay, eat his okay. ass. Yeah, you could eat his. He ass. wouldn't be into it. No, no. finger. I mean, it's been 10 years and we haven't gotten nah, there yet. Man, you so. can't, go, you can't like, skip well, She keeps acting like she don't finger. want to do it. You gotta, nah, you gotta do finger first. You gotta I mean, tongue, tongue first. Then yes. finger. Yes, then I'm yes, trying yes. to just get something out of it. You gotta get tongue first. You can't <laughs> just jump We're into We're all that. straight to finger. <laughs> get that butt plug. <laughs> yeah, get those butt plugs. Get yeah, yeah. back. Okay. All right, but we appreciate you. And let's all not forget, we do have our lip service live show coming up on June 19th at Sony Hall. It's in all of our links in our bio, so make sure you come check lip service live. We have some special a guest coming through. Trina is going to be there with us. Yes. Yes. Trina, the baddest bitch. Also, Deval and Kadeen Ellis will be there. You guys mm-hmm. love them when they we were on them. lip service. I and- missed it. I miss them. Well, and you'll see them there. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's going to be wonderful. <laughs> and hopefully one day we'll all be at Delilah's together, Lisa Ann. Yeah. Yes. And you this weekend, know where you're do you ever go to PA. Gossip in Long Island? Because that's where I'm dancing this weekend. No, you might have to here? go check it out. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, it's a pretty club. <laughs> I'm going to be in San Antonio. Melville. But we can go. Melville, we Long can Island. Go. That's you a fun trip. Yeah. <laughs> what day? Friday and Saturday night. Yeah, we can go. I'm going to Bobby Brown concert. Yeah. Nobody can't go with me. Don't, don't be cruel. You're going to one of those don't nights. Don't be cruel. And on Saturday, I'm doing a Puerto Rican parade festival and then the Puerto Rican parade on Sunday. <laughs> Y'all missed it. She said, don't be cruel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lisa Ann, thank you so much thank again. You. I hope your team wins, whichever team that is. All of this, the whole thing. Golden yeah, State yeah, Warriors? Yeah. Who you, who you no, got? She's going to the Warriors. Right. She likes the Warriors. She had a little Warriors boo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would say, I mean, it'd be it the first be time for, no, I'm, I'm neutral because it would be the greatest thing for Canada. It'd be the first time ever in Toronto, history. Right. They right. got a whole, you know, I whole want, country. I, I want Toronto to win, man. Kyle Lowry's been playing for that yes. team for seven years. He's got a real great life there. I'd love to see them. And Kawhi is like my new favorite basketball player. Really? Oh, yeah, because he has so little personality, so it's so explosive. Like, that funny laugh, how he has no <laughs> facial expression. It's like so Jake amazing. makes me not want them to win. That's my problem as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Oh, wow. And Thank I love you. Drake, but, but he, he grinds makes me. me yeah. He grinds he makes me. me yeah. not want my them gears. To yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lip service. (laughs) MAC Powder Kiss Lipstick is matte reinvented. The new matte formula is where matte meets moisture, giving you the zero shine look of a matte lipstick with instant long-term hydration and a weightless cushiony texture. The velvety soft matte colors glide on effortlessly with a wide range of shades that are sure to complement any skin tone. Head to your nearest MAC location to meet your matte today or shop at maccosmetics.com. 